guys, welcome back to See Mini Mom. And if you're new here, I'm glad you found me. This is my kitchen and I'm so glad that you're here. Today I am sharing with you some super easy, very inexpensive meals that I fed my family this week. So stay tuned. I keep hearing lots of concern and even panic about grocery prices rising. I am just trying to be a calm, non-anxious presence during this time and give some ideas and some encouragement where this is concerned. I do think it is possible to continue making tasty meals that we enjoy and that our family enjoys that fill the belly, but that don't break the bank. So for this video, I thought I would share with you some meals that I threw together for myself and my husband and my three kids over the week. And a lot of these are things that you to just really basic ingredients that we keep on hand in our house. I'm gonna give you a cost breakdown for these meals as well, but per the usual when it comes to giving you like a finite cost, that might vary from place to place. Well, we know it varies from place to place, but a lot of the ingredients that I am using, in my opinion, are among the least expensive items in the grocery store, relatively speaking. And I'm gonna share some tips that I hope will help you think a little bit about the way that you're cooking and maybe some substitutions that you you can make to shave a little bit off of your cost per meal, but still have great satisfying tasty meals that your family will love. I have posted a lot of budget cooking content over the years here on this channel. I have a few playlists that are linked in the description box below with similar videos. So if you like this kind of content, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and also that you click the little bell so that you receive notifications whenever I post new videos. Because a lot of my videos center around what I am doing in my kitchen to save time and to save money feeding my family. Let's dive in and get cooking. Tonight we are having a very simple recipe. It's called cozy pasta parmesan soup. I have wanted to make this ever since I scrolled by it on Pinterest. I will leave that website linked in the description box below. It is a very simple soup with only a few ingredients. In fact, the protein police are probably gonna be after me on this one because there's no meat in this. There's not even any vegetables. It's just a broth based soup with some noodles. And you know, sometimes I feel like that just really hits the spot. A nice cup of piping hot soup with with a big chunk of like crusty bread. I don't know, sometimes that's all that I need to fill the belly. So let me show you what the ingredients are for this and it's gonna be really easy and quick and I'll show you how we're serving this. This is it guys. <laughs> I know, right? So this just calls for four tablespoons of butter and three or four garlic cloves, which I will peel and mince. It calls for half a cup of Parmesan, and I am using um, some Parmesan from a wedge that I purchased at Aldi. I like to purchase the wedges. They're not that expensive, and they last a long time, and a little bit of the fresh goes a long way. We need about a half a cup grated, so I will get to grating that. The original recipe calls for a kind of pasta called ditalini, which is like a little bitty, like, round pasta and you absolutely can use that but I already have some mini bow ties and I already measured this it is actually just the right amount that we need for this recipe it also calls for 32 ounces which is four cups of chicken broth and I'm just going to make the equivalent of that with my broth base so let's get to the stove and get this going Not only was this soup made up of a few super simple ingredients, it also came together really quickly, as you can see. I just sauteed the garlic in a little butter and then added the broth and cooked the noodles in the broth and then sprinkled in the Parmesan when the noodles were cooked to al dente and it was ready to go. And you guys know how much I love the Walmart discount bakery rack. If you don't know where that is located in your Walmart, see if you can find it because I almost always find really cheap bread options there. Of course, you can make bread from scratch if you want and that would be delicious with this as well. Well, but this was really tasty and like I said something super simple but sometimes that's all that we need to fill the belly and I really enjoyed this and I had the leftovers for lunch the next day. Whenever I want to keep meat a part of my budget meals, a lot of times I will utilize sausage. And if you watch my channel a lot, you know that we especially like the fully cooked smoked sausages around here, but I also use ground sausage a lot in place of something that might call for ground beef. Ground beef is definitely more expensive than ground sausage, at least in my stores right now. And where sausage is concerned, it packs a big punch without having to use a lot. It is something that is a little bit higher in fat and that is already pre-seasoned 
season so it adds a lot of flavor to dishes without having to use very much. So tonight I'm actually gonna make two recipes because I'm going to use just half a pound of sausage in each one. I'm going to go ahead and make both recipes tonight because they're both like one pan skillet meals that are gonna come together really easily and then we can have the leftovers for lunches throughout the week. But if you wanted to, you could obviously make these on different nights. They're gonna be really fast. They're using pretty simple ingredients, at least around here, stuff that we already have on hand. So let me show you what I'm making. I'm going to make just a really simple sausage pasta dish with the ingredients that you see here. I have half a pound of sausage right here, and this is actually an Italian sausage. And then I have half of an onion and a few cloves of garlic. I will chop those and mince those, and I will brown that along with the sausage. And then I'm going to add a can of tomatoes. This is just a 14 and a half ounce can, and one cup of water and eight ounces of pasta. So about half a box of pasta, I'm using this rotini that came from Aldi, salt and pepper to taste. And I'm gonna cook that until the pasta is almost to al dente. So I'll cook it about seven or eight minutes. And then I'm gonna add a cup of this heavy cream, half and half would do just fine, but this is what I have. So half of this container, and then about half a cup, about, the, about a third to half a cup of some grated Parmesan cheese here. Well, let's get it going. I do get asked about my little meat chopping tool that I use when I'm browning ground meat, and it is always linked in my description box. It's an Amazon link, so you can check it out there. As you can see, this is a one pot dish that's coming together pretty quickly. I did go ahead and add just about a half cup more water than I initially thought I would need. Now I am using some sausage that I already had on hand in my freezer, but I did check the price of sausage at my Walmart today whenever I was there, and they still had Italian sausage for $3.13 a pound for the Great Value brand. I also found a turkey sausage that was less than $3, and sausage is even less expensive at my Aldi whenever I go and shop there. So I know that those may not be the exact prices that you have. In my neck of the woods, sausage is still pretty affordable, especially whenever I'm going to be using just a little bit of it in my recipes. Okay. My my timer just went off. Everything is coming along swimmingly. I'm gonna give this a little stir. Okay, it smells fantastic. I'm gonna turn my heat down to low and I'm gonna add my half and half and my parm. Oop. Oh, look at that. I'm gonna give that a nice stir. Now I don't want this to scald, so I'm gonna kind of keep a close eye on it, but I'm gonna pop my lid back on for just about two minutes. My heat is turned all the way down to low. Like I said, I don't want it to scald, but I may check on it here every minute or so until the pasta is cooked through. Now, a wedge of fresh Parmesan cheese is something that I have started to just keep on hand in my refrigerator. I find it to be pretty affordable if I'm purchasing it, especially at Aldi. But if you don't have that and you wanna just use some of the grated stuff, I would just use less. Like instead of using a half a cup, I would only use a quarter cup or even just a few tablespoons of this. You know, sometimes whenever I'm in a pinch, I'll even use the the little packets from the pizza place. I save those because they come in handy every once in a while. You guys look at how fantastic this looks. I wish you could smell it through the screen. <laughs> smell a vision because <laughs> it smells amazing. I can't wait to try that. Such simple ingredients and only half a pound of sausage in there. All stuff I pulled from my pantry. Yum. Okay. Friends, listen, this is one of the best things I have made in a long time. So easy, it's very rich. I think half and half would be fine, or you could even like add more pasta and water and kind of stretch out the rich ingredients, the sausage and the cream across more. But this is a dish that tastes expensive. Like this tastes like something I would get in a restaurant, but it it's, I made it at home and it cost me, <laughs> like less than $5, I think, for all of the ingredients put together to make a big pot of this that would feed probably four or five, maybe six people. So good. This is gonna be a super simple sausage and potatoes dish here. So I'm starting out the same way with half a pound of ground sausage, which I will brown with half of an onion chopped and a few garlic cloves minced, salt and pepper to taste. And then this is about four to five cups of potatoes. This is probably about four medium potatoes, peeled and chopped, maybe five or six small ones. But you can see this is sort of a standard size cutting board. And this is what I have here for the potatoes. I will need some water, but I'm not going to give a finite measure 
measurement. I'll show you how we're doing that whenever we get to that point. And then I'm also gonna need some milk and two tablespoons of flour, salt and pepper to taste. Let's get going. Same song, second time around. Gotta get the sausage and onions brown. Do, 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 do. So my sausage and my onions and garlic are done browning. And what I'm gonna do now is drop my potatoes in here and then put just enough water over the top to cover them up or get them just to the just to the top level of potatoes. And I'm gonna add a little salt and pepper. Not too much because the sausage is already seasoned. And I'm gonna let that come to a low boil or simmer. My potatoes have been boiling or simmering, boiling, simmering for about 10 to 12 minutes. They're almost done, so I'm gonna add the milk and the flour, but first I'm gonna put it in a jar and shake it up really, really well. Then I will pour it into the pan and I will let that um, simmer on low for just a couple minutes to help kind of thicken it up and it should be ready. Here is my sausage potato skillet meal here. And I realized that basically this is a very simple sausage potato chowder or stew. It's not like a soup because it's thick. You know, I wanted it to be that way, but there's no cheese in it. You saw just very simple ingredients. So I'm really interested to try this. It smells fantastic. I feel like this is just comfort in a bowl. It's very hot. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's just amazing to me how such a few simple ingredients can just kind of mingle together and still make a really flavorful meal. And obviously this is gonna be very filling because we're talking about potatoes here. So definitely a good and expensive way to fill the belly. And this is really good like on a cool fall night. Eating on a budget doesn't mean that you have to cut out the fruits and veggies, especially if you are savvy about shopping sales and knowing which fruits and veggies are in season, and also some that are cheap all year long, like carrots. I believe these carrots came from my Imperfect box, but they're priced at 84 cents a pound right now at my Walmart, so these carrots came out to about 36 cents. And then I picked up zucchini on sale for 89 cents a pound. So this zucchini only cost me about 54 cents. I also had a red onion hanging out in my crisper that really needed to be used. So I decided, you know what? I'm gonna to toss this in here as well. This is one of those meals that's really great for cleaning out the fridge whenever I have produce that I want to use. I'm gonna use some rice and the cost of the meal will depend on what kind of rice you're using. I happen to have a package of basmati rice that was open in the pantry. So that I used a cup of that. And I also made sure that I threw in my carrots the last few minutes that the rice was cooking because I wanted them to steam just a little bit since they take longer to cook than any of the other vegetables. Then to throw this together, I am just using um, a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna throw in my onions and zucchini and season that with a little salt and pepper. We'll talk more about some other seasoning options here in a second. And what really makes this meal for me is a smoked sausage, a turkey smoked sausage. I can still get for $2.46 a package and they come with two links in it and I just need one in here. And this sausage is seasoned so well that I find that for this kind of dish, it helps to season the veggies and the rice as well. So after I have sauteed the sausage and the zucchini and the onions a little bit on their own. I just added the cooked rice and carrots back in and seasoned with some salt and pepper. If you wanted to make this meat free, you could use some chickpeas or some black beans or another kind of bean as well. Hopefully my gluten-free people will be happy with this one since I'm using rice instead of pasta. And I'm also not using any dairy in this, you'll notice, which is kind of a big deal for me. You could also season this with a little taco seasoning. I have used this everything but the Elote um, seasoning from Trader Joe's and this one from Trader Joe's as well. So you can season this however you wish. I just used salt and pepper today. I kept it pretty simple. And you can see here just how colorful this is with the veggies. Of course, you can change up the veggies according to what's in season. This whole pot only cost me $3.10 total. So if you wanted to serve five, like my family, it would be 62 cents per serving. If you wanted larger servings, it came out to 78 cents per serving. I use this as a lunch prep a lot of times as well because it reheats beautifully. I hope this gives some ideas or a jumping off point for some really simple, inexpensive meals that we can make our families. And one of the things that I meant to say in my intro was that I don't intend for this to be a consistent or sustainable way of eating all the time, but sometimes making one or two of these a week can create a lot of wiggle room in our grocery budget overall.
All right, you guys, that's what I have for you. I hope that that was helpful and encouraging. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be sure to check in again with another video soon.